Okay, today's the day. Three things will get you to level 20 with Claude Code faster than anything else. And I'm gonna show you how to do this while building a new feature on a live application and deploying it to the public. Let's get in there. I have an application that I wrote last time in a video called the One Hour Builds that is a little prompt kind of management system that you can pull forward like Spotlight. What I want to do to that application is I want to put on a welcome screen for the first launch. So there's a couple features that I have to ask for. I am going to talk to ChatGPT about that and get these requirements pulled together. We'll talk about that in just a bit. All right, excellent. PRD prompt like welcome screen. Let's go. Okay, here in Claude Code, what we're going to do is I'm going to move into what they call plan mode. I'm using Opus 4.5. I'm going to give it this PRD and let it think about that for a bit. One of the excellent things about Claude Code is its plan mode. It's kind of a superpower that it has, and they've really upped it recently, where it goes off and spins off multiple planners at once, combines information, and brings back questions that it doesn't know the answers to, to the user before continuing on. You can see here that it's setting up multiple explorers to kind of start looking through the PRD that I've given it. Okay, so this is one of the secret sauces of using Claude Code to its maximum. You're actually going to start moving towards something that's like objective-based development. So you're really looking for outcomes. You're trying to define outcomes. You'll hear spec kit or a spec-driven development or PRDs. You'll hear a lot of these terms being kicked around. Claude code and other terminal systems like this, these tightly agentic driven systems that are trying to take as much of the work as possible on their shoulders, will work for hours at times, but they really need very clean definitions. And this is the place that our work is moving to. And you'll be most successful the moment you say, okay, I need to take on an active role of definition. I need to very clearly say what I want, not the how. We have to get better at defining the what, and that's what this is all about. So the best thing you can do is be able to very clearly say what you want to the model before you get started. Okay, here we are, take a look at this. This is the end of the planning stage. It went through and did the planning and it has a couple questions and you can see them here. One is, do I have the asset ready? And I do, so I'm going to hit enter there. And then it's asking me, do I want a separate window or do I want it in the same launcher? Once we get through those, it says, excellent, do you want to submit the answers? At this point, it's going through the application itself and figuring out the how. We gave it all the what, and that was outside of Claude Code and outside of the project intentionally. So that what we ended up with is a very clean requirements document describing what behaviors we're looking for. That's incredibly important in this new paradigm. Now you put it back into the system, go back into planning mode and say, here is what I want. Can you go figure out how to pull this off? And so it chews a way to try to figure out how am I going to go about this with the structures that we already have here and the technology that are being used. That's why this works so well. Our goal here is to get it right at the very beginning as much as we can. I can't describe how much this has changed recently. I was not using plan mode at all at one point, and very, very recently I've come to a point because of Opus 4.5 and some of the changes they put into Claude Code, this is a complete unlock in the way that I work now. So this is the readout of the entire plan. This is a moment that I still advise take a look at this. This is the moment to go back and say, oh, wait a second, I saw you're using X library. I really personally just don't like X library. I'd rather write it with Y. This is that moment you just select this bottom item, but I'm gonna say, yep, looks pretty good. Get to cooking. Okay, and so Claude is off and running. It's got his task list here and will work as long as it needs to work to get this done. I'm free to go. Okay, so you can see this is the window that got created. There's one glaring oversight. I did not provide the image to Claude when I told him to go build. I gave him the PRD and I gave the image to ChatGPT to get the PRD from it. That all worked just fine. But Claude had no idea what the visual look was supposed to be. So this came out of just text and description and some of its inference of what I might want from a new window. So what I need to do is I need to go and give Claude code the image that was what we want want kind of the design of the system and say, I'm sorry, it doesn't quite look the way we need. Here, can you make it look like that? So let's drop down into the system and make some of those changes ourselves. Hey, if this kind of content is clicking with you, please do subscribe. So I've said if I hit 25,000 subscribers by the time Christmas comes around, 25 by 25, then I will dress up, which 
I've said previously, I'm very nervous about doing so. It's okay if you don't subscribe for the rest of the month, but if you do, it really does help the channel. But do subscribe because I have another video coming out that's similar to this. It's actually the next step. It is really my next video, I believe, that's going to release. It is the workflow that I use. This is a very small sample of the workflow I use. I wanna go a bit deeper in it so you really understand what the unlocks are and how I use them. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, so we've reached the, the other big item. First one was planning. That's a major one to understand. The second one is kind of context and environment. We're gonna cover that very briefly here. It's very easy, but I wanna call out just how important it is. This is another one of those majors. So here we are, we have a change that needs to be made, but we're sitting inside of a bunch of information here that we can scroll up and see that it's already done, right? The system's been working for a while. If I go and tell it to do something else, when I say, hey, do you mind doing X? All of this other information is going to the model, and so it's in its brain at the same time, as if I'm kind of asking about that to some degree. So we don't really want to mix these contexts together, and it's something that you'll hear us talk about contexts or kind of number of tokens, those sorts of things. So if we look in here in Claude code, the slashes are where all the, the actions, like you might see on a menu bar or something. Something, if you type in slash, you'll get the actions. And if we look at the context, then we can take a look at what our context currently looks like and how it's being utilized. And they give us a nice little graph here that you can see the Claude Opus uh, system here, the system prompt, there you go, is uh, 1.5%. The tools that Claude code knows about itself, all of this, this kind of harness that I was talking about, those are those two. MCP tools are listed, memory files are listed, and that one we will cover in just a second. The memory file is kind of important, but you can see we're at 1.6% for the memory file. And then all of the messages that I was just scrolling up to show you are these purple ones. So we're eating up a fair bit of space already with the previous messages of this context. So what we really want to do is just do a clear. And that's the second simple thing that I'm sharing. Make sure you clear when you start a new task. When you're starting any new context, try a clear. And if I'm going to hit the up arrow now, it goes back in my message history or my action history. And then I'm going to go to context. Take a look at our context again. You'll see all that purple is gone. So that's all we did is we cleared how much context we're using with previous information. And now I want to be able to drag in that image. Hey, Claude, sorry about that. This is the image. This is the target of what we want the window to look like. The Other than the button and the radio uh, or the, the checkbox at the bottom with the text, everything else is really on the core image. So we don't need any other information added to the window. We just need the image, the button, and the checkbox and label set up kind of like you're seeing here, if you don't mind. And this, I think, might even be the resolution of the window. So this aspect ratio is something that we're shooting for as well. Can you change what we've got for the welcome window to look more like this, please? And that's it. So I'm going to kick that off. This, I don't need to do a full PRD. I don't need to do planning. It's a small enough request, and I'm focusing it in on a specific item which is the welcome window. I told it that I'm looking at the welcome window. You'll see it will drive itself all the way down into researching welcome information and it'll hit it just fine. Okay, so while this thing's working away to change that welcome screen that we were looking at, I am going to hit an exclamation point here. This is a, a secret tip. This is not one of the power move. It is a power move. You don't need to know about it, but if you like shell, this is something that you'll understand. I can type in uh, just kind of shell commands here and they'll be executed and that information will be returned turn uh, in, in the messaging above in the same place that you're seeing all this action happening. So that's something that we can take on to actually take a look at the memory file, which is something that we're interested in. Holy cow, look at that hit. It's great to see. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so let me come back here and we will run a shell command. Let's run the LS so that we can see what's inside of the environment that we're in. And you'll see control, uh, control O to see all of the information. That's the LS. This Claude MD file is something that I want to show you. So what I will do is I'm going to leave Claude for a second and I'll just cat Claude MD. And so this is a very big file in this repository because I've run init in this file. It's one of these features that will auto load all of this information. And and what you're seeing is all of this information talking about what are the scripts, what is the layout, what folders might you look in, what are the languages that we 
prefer in the different layers? What's the architecture? It's a pretty complicated build in this little application. Um, so this, this, this memory file is what we call this. The Claude file is kind of complicated. Frankly, it's bigger than I would like it, but there are quite a few things of concern in here that I want it to know about. Now, why do I show you that? We can jump back into Claude. And that is the thing that when we do context, that is this memory file. And so every time you start a new chat, which we just did because we just came in, we are going to be eating up a certain amount of space with that memory information. Now it is critical. This is a place where you're going to put the instructions that you want to not have to say every time, or you want to opinionate the system with. This is just the last one of those things that I wanted to point out. That is a really major feature that if you understand what it's doing, you can get some really val big value out of using it and just kind of putting in the hints that you want. So I wanted to point out this one and the very last one that I'll just show you at the very end, in case you're worried about your tokens or your tokens start to uh, kind of run out. There's a status slash command that you can see where you are with current session, the week, and uh, with the different models, those kinds of things. And there's also a model selection system that you can come in here and change between the different models. If you have to start downsampling, I don't advise coming off of Opus if you can help it. I understand that's going to eat a lot of tokens for a lot of you. If you have to downsample, at the very least use Opus for planning. It's very, very good at planning or anything else, refactors or something intense. It's going to be great at that. Sonnet is still a fantastic model, but Opus 4.5 just happens to be something kind of brand new. Okay, we're into the last phase, and frankly, this is the most exciting and the most fun, and I love doing it every time I do it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask Claude to run the test cases. That's the first thing I want to do. I don't know anything about how it runs all the different test cases. There's a lot of different layers, so it does test casing different ways. So I'm going to let it do the test cases itself, and let's see what it comes back with. Hey, Claude, can you run the test cases? And if you run any visual EDE type of test cases, make sure that they are uh, with headed mode or something like that so that we can see the browser doing its work. All right, so it's saying and it's going to run some ED tests. There we go. The browser's popping up, doing all the tests that it needs to do. You know, of course, no hands. I don't even know all of the tests that it's running, but you can see it just going bananas with all of the Chrome instances that it's bringing up to do this kind of test casing. And when you are not in headed mode, headed means you can see it, that it kind of has a visual representation. You can run in unheaded mode or headless mode, and you won't see any of that. And it goes by blazingly fast. It also works on distributed systems as well. Some of these tools are just brilliant. And you can see it did have a couple failed tests that we need to go address. I'll get those addressed and then take you on to the next very exciting part. Oh goodness, can you uh, address these tests? Okay, so we're done with all of the test case stuff. So let me hit a clear and say, okay, Claude, uh, this is this has really been great work. I really appreciate it. Do you mind uh, doing a PR for this? I'd love to create a new PR for this. Okay, so it created a new feature branch for us, gave it a name, um, did all the work that it needed to to create the commits that it felt like it needed to make, pushed everything up and created a pull request for us. Let's take a look at that. Okay, here's the pull request. Uh, it's got a good definition of of the changes that are in it. Um, it is out there currently running tests. And then once it is finished running tests, we will merge this and move on to the next step but kind of fantastic. Let me point out, I didn't do anything with GitHub. I've just come here to show you this and I just asked Claude to do all of this. Now, admittedly, I'm being kind of very permissive with the changes that I make here. You can see I'm in bypass permissions on in this repository and this, uh, this application. And I'm very careful about this, but that is something that I would say be cautious about. It will ask you to accept these. I would do that for a long time until you really gain a lot of confidence in the things you're letting it do. But it's really fascinating that I can just say, run the tests, let me see the browser, do something in GitHub, create a PR for me. Now it's a feature branch. What am I supposed to do? Okay. And here these changes have succeeded. And normally I would come out here and check things out and squash and merge myself and then delete the branch. But what the heck, we're having fun today. Hey, it looks like everything passed on that PR. Um, can you merge it? And uh, let's do a release so that everybody out in the world can uh, get this really cool new feature. Really? You can see back here that it has successfully merged. I will delete the branch. It 
pulls back to main, so it puts us back on the main branch because that branch is no longer needed. It takes a look at how to do a version, and it's saying, uh, since this is a new feature, I'll bump to 1.2, and it was at 1.1.3. It'll go to 1.2 since it's a minor release with a new feature. Very, very smart. Excellent. Okay. And it did everything it needed to do. It bumped everything. It built everything. It built a release out here on GitHub, which is how if you want to go by prompt light itself, I'll leave this in the show notes so that you can get the application if you like it. Um, and this is how you'll come by if you're on a Mac and get it for the universal build. That's what it did. It also installed it onto my system. It's another part of its release process. So we should be able to run prompt light and boom, there we go. This is our new one. Let's go. That was awesome. Okay, so we covered a lot of ground and you saw me actually build and release a feature from scratch all the way to the end out to production within building this video. So this was a lot. I hope you saw some of the major elements that are important working with a process. That next video is coming once again. That one will give you a little bit more about the workflow itself and the process that I use. That's a major, major unlock, but we did see quite a bit of it today. And then how I work through some of the bugs, how we can use something like Claude code as not just for code. I mean, we did releases, we did descriptions of the uh, system itself. We are using it for anything. I use it to do this for my notes as well. I take meeting notes, I put them in folders, and then I work with Claude code to have conversations and understandings of what's going on. It can do one heck of a lot more than you might imagine it can do. But if you're just trying to get started with code, hopefully this showed you something. Really, thanks for coming along for the ride on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.